All right, so I have two more established identity problems. Let's start with tangent squared v times cosine squared v plus cotangent squared v times sine squared v equals 1. It looks very complicated, but it turns out it's not. So remember, when you're doing established identity problems, you always start by picking a side. You pick the side that's more complicated, so in this case, we will start with the left-hand side. So we just write that down. Tangent squared v times cosine squared v plus cotangent squared v times sine squared v equals, nope, we can't say equals 1. We need to just mess around with this side. Simplify using algebra and trig. Well, first, I have tangent squared and I have cotangent squared. Let's write everything in terms of sines and cosines. So tangent squared v is sine squared v over cosine squared v. So this is sine squared v over cosine squared v. And I'll just leave my cosine squared v there. Don't have to change anything then. Plus cotangent can be written as cosine and squared, because it was cotangent squared. So cosine squared v over sine squared v. And I then still multiply by the sine squared v. And look at this, a lot of stuff cancels. Sine squared v over cosine squared v times cosine squared v, cosine squared v on top and bottom, so we're just left with sine squared v. And a similar thing happens with the second expression. Cosine squared v over sine squared v times sine squared v, the sine squared v's cancel. We're just left with cosine squared v. And are we done? Well, not quite, we're not equal to one, but Really, we are equal to 1, because sine squared v plus cosine squared v by the Pythagorean identity is, in fact, 1. Check mark. All right, so that turned out to be a very easy one. Let's look at one that's a little more challenging. Right here, sine u over sine u minus cosine u is 1 minus, 1 over 1 minus cotangent u. Now, here, both sides look pretty complicated, and it's not entirely clear which side we should start with. I'm going to show you two ways to do this. First, there's a quick, uh, quick and kind of tricky way to do it if we start with sine u over sine u minus cosine u. So let's see what that looks like. First, you write down that side, sine u over sine u minus cosine u. Now, I know I am looking to get a 1 in the numerator. So it would be very nice to be able to divide the numerator by sine of u. If I divide the top of the fraction by sine of u, I also have to divide the bottom of the fraction by sine of u so I don't change its value. But let's try that. So I'm just going to multiply top and bottom of this fraction by 1 over sine u. 1 over sine u. And on bottom, I have sine u minus cosine u times, again, 1 over sine u. OK, so I've not changed the value because I've multiplied top and bottom by the same thing, 1 over sine u. And now look what happens. I have sine u times 1 over sine u. That becomes 1. What about the denominator? Well, I have, s I have to distribute the 1 over sine u. So I have sine u times 1 over sine u. That's 1. I have to distribute the 1 over sine u to the negative cosine u as well. So I get cosine u over sine u, which we all know is cotangent of u. And that's it. We're done. That's what we're looking for. Now, this is not very straightforward. You had to pick something to multiply top and bottom by, and it wasn't exactly obvious that that's what we should pick. So it's completely reasonable to think that you might not see how to do this problem. If you don't see that trick, not all hope is lost. Instead, let's try, let's try starting with the right-hand side. So let's write down 1 over 1 minus cotangent of u. And the reason I want to start with this side is I can write cotangent of u in terms of sines and cosines and get somewhere. I really couldn't do that if I started with the other side. Let's see what happens. I have 1 over 
1 minus cotangent u we say is cosine u over sine u. Okay, I have 1 over a difference of two fractions, so let's actually take that difference. Let's do the subtraction. To do that, I need to find a common denominator. So that common denominator can be sine of u. So I get sine u over sine u minus cosine u over sine u. And now I can do the subtraction. If I do the subtraction, I still have 1 in the numerator. But my denominator now becomes sine u minus cosine u divided by that common denominator, sine of u. And now I have 1 divided by a fraction. And to divide by a fraction is the same as to multiply by its reciprocal. And if I multiply 1 by the reciprocal of sine u minus cosine u over sine u, I get sine u divided by sine u minus cosine u, which is the left-hand side. So I'm done. I can put a check mark there. All right, so there are two ways to establish this slightly more challenging identity. Hope this has helped, and thanks for watching.